can some of these pH up, pH down sources kill off microbes? That's a common thing that people had mentioned. Like, hey, if you're using these things, they're killing off microbes. Now, obviously, in their raw form, right, isn't Vinica used as like a cleaning method? It's like it's supposed to kill off microbes. So like in its raw form, it'll do harm. But people worried that when you're using pH up and pH down just in water, it's still harming microbial life once you're actually pouring that into the medium. Is there any truth to that or is that just bro science? Mm, for the purpose of the dilute feed water that you're applying to the plants, it's not really going to harm the microbes. In fact, like nitrates, for example, which I think a lot of people associate with detrimental effects on soil biology, nitrates are very common. They're a natural source of nitrogen. Um, they get produced by microbes. They get produced by, you know, thunderstorms when there's lightning that goes through the sky that intense heat that plasma that's generated breaks dinitrogen gas bonds apart in the atmosphere and if there's rain it'll take that you know nitrogen that's been broken apart and solubilize it and rain down some nitrates that's why plants actually look you know after a thunderstorm the air has a particular smell and plants may look a little bit more perky and a little bit more green and it has partially to do with the fact that there's soluble nitrogen fertilizer being created as a part of this natural process so nitrates are very very natural um, when used excessively, I think they can throw equilibriums off in soils and it takes a long time to actually, you know, destroy the soil biology because the soil bio biology will do everything that it can to stay alive. Um, if you're talking about like the specific mechanism of action for oxidizers, which are like, you know, potassium hydroxide based pH up, I mean, yeah, they'll break down cell walls. They will completely denature DNA and they'll cause irreversible damage to anything that it touches, plants, fungi. Um, microorganisms, even humans, shouldn't be exposed to potassium hydroxide. But again, for the purpose of creating di dilute feed water, um, usually it's not measured in that kind of way. Um, you know, potassium hydroxide is used to make soap. And last time you washed your hands with soap, it didn't cause a chemical burn, right? So the way that something is ultimately processed informs how it's going to be metabolized or how it's going to be accepted into a system. Um, I would say if you're just dosing your plants with just straight pH up or pH down, um, that's going to cause some serious damage. But again, when you're talking about the tank of feed water that's made that you're going to apply to your plants, usually that tends to hang out in a pH range that's mostly acceptable. And the concentration of nutrients is also um, pretty universally accepted for all plants and all microbes and all fungi. You may notice a decrease in the overall activity of certain like fungi, for example, that are known to help plants access phosphorus in phosphorus limited conditions this is one of the benefits that um you know beneficial my uh, beneficial fungi can bring into the garden but if you're not deficient in phosphorus that one little pathway could get turned off but there's other benefits associated with having that fungi there you know there could be some stress response or stress related um, benefits there could be some disease suppression benefits fungi produce all kinds of wonderful antimicrobial compounds antiviral compounds these can be useful for plants um, outside of just their ability to help fix and make a little bit of phosphorus more available to the plants. This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com, link is in the video description, and use the discount code MrGrowIt 